It is a glorious morning here at Daytona International Speedway as we get underway with the final day of racing for the Daytona 200 week here at this phenomenal speedway. There is your starting lineup on the grid getting ready to go for round two, the second of the double header races for the Motorcycle Superstore Super Sport Championship. Had a phenomenal race yesterday. Ended up with Stefano Mesa getting the win. The reason they give us unofficial results is when they came across the line we had it as the Sadowskis has filled out the podium actually Hayden Gillum by one one thousandth of a second was shown to have pipped Matt Sadowski and picked up that final spot in the box and this is a good looking grid that is about to roll off Scott Russell it definitely is I, I, I expect the same today's race that we had from yesterday's race um, again I was touching on the Sadowski brothers I mean they did a great job finding their way to the front yesterday. That was their first time running up front in one of these races. So look for uh, more confident Sadowski brothers today. And uh, maybe one of those guys can make it to the top. But Stefano Mesa, like you said, run a great race. And, uh, and it just epic. We're looking for the same. Absolutely. And one of the great stories yesterday didn't finish that well, but was impressive in the early going. And is just a great story in and of itself. And a little bit earlier, Greg White talked to Jeff Tigert. race yesterday he was leaked well the last time we saw number 91 Jeff Tiger in the race yesterday he was leading and then critical mistake threw it down the road but tell me about that whole situation I mean you're leading a race at this level you're 36 years old you're racing here in Daytona what's going through your mind man I was just going this is awesome and this sucks all at once but <laughs> No, you know, I definitely, I, I got a great bike underneath me and um, I, I knew I could do it, but you know, I'm just, I'm not, I haven't been riding to this level a long time and uh, to be up front felt so good, but I was riding a little tight, making some mistakes and I uh, definitely gonna take a little more time getting up to speed, be a little more patient today and uh, hopefully get this bad boy, the CM Motorsports Baby Appleseed uh, bike up on the box today. Yeah, no question, if he can keep it together, he's got a good chance of winning this one. You bet, qualified second, that's where he will start in that CM Motorsports Baby Appleseed Yamaha YZF R6. Great to have everybody with us here on Speed 2. It means we just run this one live all the way through it. And what a difference a couple of days can make in terms of weather. Thursday, clear, but really cold and windy. Yesterday, better, but still chilly and breezy. Today, Scott, it is glorious. It is. It's a perfect day for racing. And we, we saw a lot of, a lot of off-track excursions throughout the week leading up due to the weather and the cold track temperatures. And the chicane mainly was where we had a big problem. So yesterday's... Uh, Proceedings went pretty smoothly, I thought, and today should be a little bit better with more tire temp. And, you know, it's a new front tire for Dunlop this weekend, so uh, hopefully that uh, everybody gets through it okay, and, and I expect a great race. Same as we saw yesterday, essentially. You know, the draft here is going to be phenomenal. We had big packs that were racing like that. Should be sp Oh, somebody down on the warm-up lap in the entrance to the chicane. Just as I said <laughs> something. But, it, you know, again, this, it, this chicane is notorious for being slippery in the morning, and here we are racing them, or yesterday's races were, took place in the afternoon, so this is a bit different. So these riders are going to keep that in mind, and uh, can't see exactly who that rider is there. Looks like the 24 of Two, Travis. 229 Walker. 229, there. sorry. 228, Neil Herbert out of Los Angeles, California. Another of the baby Appleseed riders having that problem, but uh, probably at least it wasn't that fast when he went in there on a warm-up lap. Yeah, let's see if he can get this thing restarted and make it around to the grid. I mean, he's trying to get out of the grass. He's obviously got issues, so his day looks like it's over. No, oh, that's not good. Not able to start. Let's see if we can see what happened. He's coming in. Oh, never mind. It had nothing to do with the racetrack. He just yeah. got in there hot, ran out of racetrack, and, you know, that's something on the, on the warm-up lap. I always like to kind of let those guys go, and I like to be the last guy around where you gave yourself plenty of room and didn't get in any situation like that. But, um, unfortunately, such a big field, he got yeah. caught up and ran out of road. We don't get the nickname Mr. Daytona without having some success here. Puerta, who was on pole, ran at the front, ended up finishing in the fifth spot. What, if anything, can he do differently today? Well, I mean, he's kind of got to do a, a lot like he did yesterday, really, Greg. I mean, the only thing he can do is try to position himself in a better spot on that last lap coming out of the chicane, and it's a crapshoot. We saw that in, yeah. in a lot of the races yesterday. So it's hard, especially when there's two or three or four guys in the mix. Um, when there's one or two guys, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to make that decision and put yourself in the right spot. So Tommy's just put his head down and ride as hard as he can and, and on that last lap try to be in the right spot. 
We are just seconds away from the start of the second round of the 2013 Motorcycle Superstore Super Sport Championship. And again, this huge field, when they launch, they are heading from the pit lane grid down into turn one. Don't get a lot of runs at it. Have to execute beautifully here. Revs are up, and we are underway. Round two. Looked like a nice start from that third spot, which would be Hayden Gillum. But you never know until it settles out down into turn one. And a great field streaming down in there. It looks like Puerto was able to maybe get that run using that inside line to good effect. See where he is coming out of this tricky little quick left-right jab and into the International Horseshoe. It is the number 12 of Puerto on point. And Tiger Ooh, out there again. a couple of guys wide. Yeah, they've changed the radius of that corner right there. So it's a bit tighter corner now than it was in the old days. And uh, King run into problems right there as you saw that. Puerta through that high speed kink on the infield now into the West Horseshoe, then turn six and then blast up onto the banking. Boy, he looks strong right there already. That's Tigert slotting into second, Gillum in third, right as they qualified at this point. And then the 37 of yesterday's winner, Stefano Mesa. Big move to the inside here. Gillum trying to swing out and get the drive. Tigert ran it a little bit yeah. wide right there. And you know, smart for him to pick the bike up. When he tipped it in, he felt like he had a little bit too much speed, so he just kind of let the bike run out and regroup and, and go again. You know, a lot of riders would have tried to just pitch that thing in and tossed it away on the first lap. He learned a lot from yesterday. Yeah, he said, obviously, I need to just calm down a little bit and uh, not be so excited about what's happening. He's shown some superb pace, no question of that. Hayden Giddle locks into that second spot now. Tiger third, uh, Mesa fourth, and about sixth or seventh rider down. That's Matt Sadowski, yeah. it looks like. Oh, big off. A uh, couple of bikes down there. And that's another one coming down on the approach. So three of them. And I wonder if that was seeing that first rider off. A little bit of loss of concentration. It looked like Matt Sadowski was the first rider to hit the deck. Red flag situation here, obviously. All these bikes are definitely in the impact zone. So Sadowski... Well, they're still seeing guys got to slow it down. Matt Sadowski back on and able to continue. But that second rider in he there was two of them and they augured in pretty good over there. Looks like the fourth guy is going to be able to continue. We don't quite have numbers yet, folks. It'll be interesting to see if his bike's damaged badly enough where he cannot rejoin the race. And I'm not sure how that plays out. If if uh, you're in an incident and you cause the red flag, they may send you to the back of the field. But I'm not sure it was Sadowski that actually caused that. That chicane has been the tricky spot this entire event. Now let's see what happened. Watch for Sadowski coming in. And there he goes. And that other rider went down. And that guy, the third guy in, looked like he just pitched it to not get into that second rider. Wow. A lot of debris blown up on the track, Scott. Riders just continue to fall down. You know, the thing about it is, Greg, we touched on it. Yesterday we raced in the afternoon. The track had time to heat up and get a little bit more grip in it. Today it's cooler in the morning. These riders are starting with a full load of fuel on that first lap. The front tire doesn't have enough heat. And uh, this is the kind of situation you run into. See here, take a look at the graphic. Red flag regulations. All riders stop racing, proceed to their stalls. You are allowed to do repairs, adjustments, and refuel. The one thing you cannot do without approval, though, is change the tires. Sadowski having that crew take a quick look. Little issue on the right side handlebar. There's a couple of the other riders, one of them anyway, that was involved in that incident. Secondary in. As you would expect, they're giving his bike here a very good look over. He's putting the uh, tire warmers on as well to keep those tires warmed up. As I said, you can't change them without approval, and that is not given too freely unless it's a safety issue. And, yeah, I can't really see. They're working down now on, that, on the left side of the bars and fork area. So they told them just hop off. we got a little bit of work to do. But there is a mandatory period of time here, so it's not like they have to rush terribly. They can really take a look at it and try to get it fixed. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, what they rule on this. Apparently, the AMA, when, you, when there's a red flag situation and you cause it, you do go to the back of the field. So you see Matt Sadowski there kind of washing his face off, probably sand all over him. But it'll be interesting to see who they determine actually caused that red flag with three or four riders going down. I wouldn't be surprised if they send them all to the back. 
Yeah, because it was it was separate incidents. I mean, Matt went off, and then the other guys that went off wasn't related to Matt's crash, and uh, it wasn't like Matt hauled a bunch of debris up on the track. He just lost it. So, just a cold track. Yeah, just a cold track and a, and a treacherous turn that's been bothering a lot of riders all week and. There's been a lot of money spent over there in that chicane, Greg, this weekend. Oh, man, immense amounts of money. Interestingly, let's talk about this now. You, you're all amped up. You got that start in. You're, you got that energy and all of that going, and now you got to just stop and sit for a few minutes. What does that do to the psyche? Well, I mean, you know, the good guys, they just shrug that stuff off. You know, what just happened, you got to put that behind you and move on. So that's, that's the key is for a rider's mental mental thinking he's got to get over these things you know it's just like being on the racetrack and somebody crashes in front of you you mm -hmm. can't think about it for the next two corners as soon as it happens you move on so hopefully these riders will be able to do that um, now they have a better understanding of what they're up against when they get to that chicane that right. first this next first lap of the race so well and it's and you're arriving on these first few laps in a big pack and so you may not be on the line that you've practiced in and the like so you can end up running wide over there So the Sadowski is really going over those bikes. Everybody, of course, at this point, going to be giving it a very solid look. But there's some now. There's a little bit of anxiety. A couple of guys down there going, "Man, I need some work here, and nobody's over here." You've got the riders helping get yeah, these bikes up. Yeah, you can see that right here, yeah. Matt Sadowski down there working on his own motorcycle. Um, looks like he's got some issues with that right side foot peg where the bike went down. So. Probably going to have to start from the back of the pack, if I had to guess. And, of course, the gentleman who started on pole yesterday ended up fifth, is back on pole and leading at the time of this red flag is with Greg White. Tommy Puerta, um, red flag situation, unfortunately. Um, did you see anything from where you were? No. On the cold on lab, I saw a crash on the chicane, but I didn't saw anything else on the, on the first lap. Let's go back to yesterday's race. You were in a good position. You don't want to talk about yesterday's race? Did you learn? What did you learn from the race yesterday and, and the infamous Daytona banking? Oh, I did 100% all the nine laps, and then on the on the last lap, I got a, I had a plan like on after the chicane coming out of the last banking on third, but then Hayden uh, passed me, and I just kind of freak out. And when I passed him on the outside, everybody went down. So. That was it, my, my race was over. I almost got third, but I was battling for the lead all race, so I was really mad at it. And now it's gonna be another race, another day, so hopefully we can win this, this race. All right, so the lesson at Daytona is don't freak out. <laughs> all right, thanks, Tommy. You know, I wanted to add to Scott, you know, it just seems that Daytona is more susceptible to these kind of things than anywhere else, and it's really odd that we're getting so many incidents in the chicane, but whenever this place has just a little chill in the air, the chicane always seems to be treacherous, and it never gets used, does it? I mean, most of the time, it's the bankings that are getting used here, and the infields get used, I know, for uh, for some, some things that they do during the week, but the chicane probably hardly ever gets used other than when we're here. Yeah, I mean, you can just look at the chicane, and it looks like a different type of pavement almost, you know, and... Uh, Got to go across the paint going in and, and kind of coming out as well. And like you said, the wind's been blowing around a lot this weekend, so there is sand all around the track. You just don't know what. And then to add to that a little bit, there's a different front tire this year. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe it, it needs more heat to really work good. And, then, and that, from what we saw yesterday, I got to believe that that's got something to do with it as well. I've never, ever seen this many crashes in the yeah. chicane. And how many times have I been down here? A lot of times. So it's... Uh, definitely something to, that's in the rider's mind and uh, you just kind of got to leave a little bit in, in reserve as you go in there you know and uh, it's hard to do when you're racing against 60 guys that all want to want to take that spot from you I think that's a very good point that Jason brought up too probably since the 24 sports car race that chicane really hasn't been used and uh, you know so it's as you said it's just getting dusted up and greased up and everything and these are small tires on these bikes so it takes a while to lay the rubber back down and it's also a, it's an experience thing too. I mean, you want to yeah. go out and get heat in your tires through the couple right-handers that you have. But boy, when you start seeing people crash, I don't care how experienced of a rider you are, it definitely plays in your mind a little bit that oh, I got to get heat in this tire. But how hard do I push through the infield to get enough heat there for the chicane? That's right. And then you, we've seen riders fall down without any lane angle in there. So it's like, what do you do there? You just kind of 
you know, they get it, they get amped up in this first lap, what you saw, and everybody's vying for position, want to stay close to the front, so nobody wants to, to back off, mm -hmm. really. And uh, it bit about four of them on that run. So that's a long, that's a long run out of that right hander that the the West Horseshoe. Oh yeah. Until you get back to that quick right into the chicane, and that tire will cool off. Greg White, with Jeff Tiger down here, and Jeff, uh, you had a good start to the race, but the conversation the guys were just having is about having enough confidence or, or experience to create the heat in the tire. Um, how are you going about doing that? And then how was the chicane feeling when you first went through there? Yeah, it was uh, definitely slick. I mean, first lap. So, I mean, the best way is just to kind of ease up, ease your speed up and, uh, and work the infield too. You know, we got the, there's three right handers on the whole track. So, you know, it's critical to get a good, good, solid ride and the few rights leading up to the, the first set of uh, first banking sections to at least give it a little bit of chance to keep some heat by the time you dip into the chicane. So, you know, that's a big part of it. And uh, by three or four or five laps in, hopefully we'll have the confidence to be able to go through there full bore. But definitely, got we all got to take our time the first few laps, make sure no one gets, uh, gets any incidents and we all get through clean. Now we saw you go a little wide in one of the corners. Um, how are you feeling? Are you tight or are you loose? Yeah, I mean, I just made a slight mistake. I think uh, I, uh, Tomas uh, kind of sucked me in, uh, you know, into the braking zone, and I went a little deeper than I wanted again. And thinking about the side of the tire from yesterday, I just was like, okay, you know, let's go. It's so early. Let's run wide. And, uh, you know, uh, Gillum got around me, and um, but I was able to collect it back up and got a good run on the on the first set of the banking and uh, got back up to Tomas and uh, was able to get kind of get a – thought it was, we were going to have a good chance here to get going, but uh, but unfortunately we had that little incident in the chicane. So, but. But uh, we'll be ready to go. Uh, I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm anxious. All right. Good luck. Thanks, Greg. But, you know, it's counterintuitive for a racer to slow down. Yeah. But it, he makes it, you know, there's the point. First few laps, back it off a little bit going through there. It's early in the race. And I thought great experience talking right there when he said, you know, I ran in a little hot. Just stand it up. Save it. You know, there's. You know, if you're in that group, you're going to be racing for the lead anyway. Well, I think he now he realized you can't win it on the first lap, but you sure can <laughs> lose it. So, I mean, he learned a lot yesterday. And all these guys know. And, it, and uh, some of these guys, you're going to see them not slow down as much as you can, and that means that they must have more feel in their motorcycle, a little maybe a little better setup, you know, and that's a big deal too. I mean, some of these guys, like I said, didn't have a lot of time leading right. in, um, or quality time, let's say, due to a lot of red flags throughout the week leading up. So that was a stop and go and practice, and it's hard to get a rhythm and, and, and maybe get the, pro the, the ultimate setup that they were looking for on the feel in the front end. And it was exactly that throughout uh, those practice sessions. Uh, we had a lot of red flags, a lot mostly, as you said, for the offs over in the chicane. And uh, so the, it's been a struggle for the crews with their communication with the rider to really get these bikes dialed up. And especially for guys that, uh, that are coming in here, they don't maybe run the full season and uh, don't have that huge book of experience. And... Uh, to just get things dialed and set up and uh, just kicking back, letting them work on that bike. Just you got to take it when it comes at you here. And uh, these uh, these long red flags, the one thing you can do is if you notice something on that first lap and the, and your, the setup you had was off, uh, this is an opportunity. You can't tweak it. That's right. You can touch the bike. You can't change the tires. You can adjust the, any of the clickers I'm sure that you need to. And we just heard the three-minute horn, so that means we will be getting the bikes back out. One more warm-up lap, and we'll grid them and start them over again. And uh, since that happened on the first lap, essentially this is, uh, unless they change the length of the race, we're at full 10 laps for race two. And let's check in once again with Jason Pridmore. Down here with Carolyn Olsen. Carolyn, big trip from Norway. What do you think of Daytona for your first time? I think it's uh, really exciting. Nothing that I've ever experienced before. And uh, how did the race go yesterday? What are you expecting today? A little bit better? Much better. I hope so. Uh, I qualified 36 and uh, ended up 26 at the finish line. But I improved my lap time with four seconds. So I'm hoping I could be fighting for points today. There you go, guys. It's a uh, two-time Norwegian super sport champion racing against all the boys over there. She decided she wanted to come to America. She got hooked up with the Celtic team, and uh, she's going to be with us for the full year. That's great to hear, a little international flavor that's, uh, uh, that's coming over and, and uh, checking it out here. So uh, that's wonderful. That's the number uh, 44 for Caroline. Yeah, I can remember my first time down here. It's, it's hard to get your arms around this racetrack, you know, the first time you come down here. And, um, you know, it's such a, a, a large racetrack and a lot of different options as far as line goes. Um, and, you know, it took me a couple of years before I got going. But so for her to chip away at four seconds from where she started and improving on her lap time, she's doing it right and just sneaking up on it and letting it come to her to um, improve ten, ten positions from yesterday. So good honor. On the schedule, this is a unique beast, this track. 
there's nothing like it, Greg. Obviously, um, it's, a tire, it's a track they have to build a special front and rear tire for, um, which doesn't offer quite the grip that you'd get if you, let's say, a mid-Ohio mm -hmm. racetrack. Um, so it's, it's, it's unique in that way and, and the high speeds that, that go along with it. Yeah, and again, we're just, if you're just joining us here on Speed 2, had a red flag about two-thirds of the way through the opening lap over in the chicane, the bus stop as it's known. A couple of riders went down, one of them the 100. The first guy to go down was Matt Sadowski. Had a great race yesterday, ended up in the fourth spot. He's going to have to start at the back of the pack. So tough go for him. He's got his work cut out for him, but they're sending him now back out on the grid, and then I'm sure they'll release him for one warm-up lap, and then we get ready to go again. The grid set here at Daytona in pit lane. Everybody is queuing up. And basically, they just go back to the original grid order, with the exception of the guys that will be at the back of the pack. So there will be some holes in the, in the early the front part of the field, which might open the door for other riders to jump in there and take advantage off the start. I mean, yeah, with Sadowski going to the back, you would think that Travis Wyman, who would be lined up in the third row, right with that opening in front of him, if he gets a good launch, might be able to pick up a few spots early. We'll see if they adjust that and move riders yeah. up. I don't think they will. I think they'll, um, we saw some places yesterday where riders weren't starting and there were holes in the field. So I assume that's going to be how we line up this time. Critical lap once again after that long stoppage to uh, See what you've got, especially if you did some tweaks on the bike, see what you've got in terms of handling, but more critically, get some heat in those tires so you're ready to go. You know, and Dunlop was very adamant in the riders meeting this weekend about staying in the parameters of where they want you to run tire pressure. So a lot of times you'll get guys trying to play with tire pressures, trying to build heat quicker or get more feel out of tires, but they're really monitoring that this weekend due to the spec tire and the special racetrack that we're riding on. They want these riders staying inside that, so it doesn't leave them a lot of room to work, and therefore they might have to adjust the clickers on the front end or preload or whatever it is to try to give them that feel or try to build more heat in that front tire. Yeah, if you go too far outside of the recommended parameters, it, it might give you early grip, but it may really affect how long that tire lasts, and it, you know you don't want to be late in a race having issues. Well, their worry is that it could cause catastrophic failure yeah. or real issues with the tire because they believe that the tire needs to work at this racetrack in this area. So they've said, said in the rivalry, they're going to monitor, and if they catch you in or outside of that, then you're excluded. Oh, that's unfortunate. This uh, that was, couldn't quite grab the number, but they had the bike as the one the 180 and it was smoking that's Kurt Murray it was smoking as they as he was running it down toward the uh, start and they just stopped him and said no 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 uh, apparently they may have even noticed something dripping and you just can't have that anything on the track like that is uh, extremely dangerous so smart move by the officials may seem harsh to Curtis but uh, you know he he'd appreciate it if he was out on the track and somebody else was leaking well it could be for his own good yeah you know, things are easy all the retire down and you're off so Last thing we want to do is have another red flag or, or an oil spill on the racetrack. So they've done the right thing there. Yeah, I'm sure it's frustrating. He finished a good top 20 and 18th yesterday in the TOBC Racing 180 Racing Suzuki GSX R600. So now he just gets to sit and watch. But the field now has completed that warm-up lap. Resuming grid positions. We're going to take a good close look here and see if that gap where Matt Sadowski would have normally started is maintained. We're to looking for a little bit of information. Here comes Tigert. Saying 317, Amando Ferrer was also, and that may have been, you know, that, that separate incident, so he may have. Apparently, the report is they do to a medical, and they're going to put that on him, so. We'll see if the okay. Matt, there's Matt Sadowski back up there where he started from. Uh, so this okay. is good. That's his brother rolling up, David Sadowski Jr. So this is great for the Sadowski clan yeah. right there, and they're going to get a, another go at it. Yeah. And, you know, Matt could have. I mean, he got up and was on that bike fairly quickly, so that's a good call because he very well may not have actually caused a red flag. So that changes it up. But we get to do it all again. Red flag shows at the front of the grid. As soon as that flag drops, as it does now, it is time. This great field, these great bikes back up on the pipe. Time to get ready to race, and a huge launch by Hayden Gillum. Man, did he nail that, see if he can carry that down into turn one. He does, looks like Tigert also got a good run. 
But that nice counter punch move, Puerta didn't get off the line great, but he's waited, cut back down underneath, slots into second. Well, this is where the guys who are willing to take chances early in the race could pay off. You know, some of the guys that have seen all these crashes kind of laying back, and Hayden runs wide. Porta takes the spot again. You know, so some of these guys are going to go for it on the first half, regardless of what's been going on all week, and that might pay off. They may make a break from the rest of the field. And it looks like Porta's got a nice feel in that front of that Yamaha, and he's going for it. Yeah, Hayden kind of was looking to show him the nose going into the kink. That's a tough spot to do it. He wisely backed out of it. And, you know, these two horseshoes, if you will, the International and the West, from a distance look fairly similar, but they are completely different. They are. The, the radius on the first, the East horseshoe is quite a bit tighter than the, the radius of the West. So a uh, lot different way you'll approach that and exit as well. So Puerta leads him up on the banking with Gillum in tow, then Tigert, and then yesterday's winner, Stefano Mesa. That's your top four, and they've got a little bit of a break. Then it looks like the uh, Sadowskis once again running perhaps in that fifth and sixth spot. And right here is where you're going to start to really feel a little bit of a toe. But I think everybody being cautious this time into the chicane. Everybody checked up, didn't try and blast by. Whoop. However, missing the chicane completely. That means you've got to come to almost a complete stop and not gain any positions. That can be pretty costly. I tell you what, it's, he's got a lot of riders are having a hard time negotiating this, this turn. When you're in a bike, a, a big bike field like this, it's hard to see your brake marker. You get sucked in a little bit deep, and I know what that chicane feels like. It comes up really quick, and you saw a lot of riders opting to pull out and go straight, which is probably a smart move instead of trying to tip it in and make the corner. Puerta got a great run at the exit of the chicane, but it's all for naught. Here comes Tigert moving into the lead, sort of replicating the run he put in yesterday. Very effective. Billigan Puerta going to try and sweep the outside. Does so. And the number 73 of Sebastio Ferreira, he did this yesterday too, was back. He started on the outside of the second row and immediately using that draft a great effect and moving up into a uh, top three spot. And the seventh, triple seven of Miller, he did this yesterday too, up into fourth. These guys, that draft, even on that opening lap, you can gain some significant ground if you play it right. That's Miller right. slip back into fifth. Yeah, it's tough here. I mean, it's easy to stay in the pack, kind of. If you can get yourself close and get up on that banking, it seems to pull this field back together as they get to these breaking zones. You've got to get, to guys get through the infield good, but just because of the draft, it's hard to get away here. Corey Alexander moves up into the ninth spot. Corey running the Suzuki. National Guard Celtic racing machine. And here we go, Tigert once again just easily moves by Puerta. Just playing that game of cat and mouse as they go whistling down toward the chicane. Puerta gonna swing to the inside, see if he actually makes the move. No, elects just to let Tigert lead, stay close. And the 73 of Ferreira showing that Rossi leg heading in. He's got a good running by yeah, Tigert does. does. He, broke, he blew by Tomas Porta on the banking without really having to draft him. Normally that's a you know, later around the banking before you'll be able to do that. He was able to pull that off pretty early. Port is going to try to repay that favor as they come through that east banking, and he does the same thing. That's one of those things you can see right there. He made that move fairly early. Tiger able to tuck right back in behind him, get a little bit of a toe pop out, and is shown as the leader at the end of lap number two over Puerta and Ferreira third. Mesa Gillum, your top five, then Matt Sadowski, Wyman Miller. David Sadowski Jr. and Corey Alexander, your top ten. Porter looked like he wanted to take that <laughs> spot back as they went through turn one, but Tiger was too strong. Shut the door on him right there. He said, I want to redeem myself from what happened yesterday and show these kids that I can run with them out here. And he's doing a great job using all the road on the exit of the racetrack right there. Down this infield straight away. This fast kink is an exciting corner for these riders. Fourth gear, you just tip it in there and then back to the throttle wide open and then hard on the brake. A lot of different lines right here, Greg. You can see yeah. that. That inside line is the preferred line, really. It's such a long radius corner. There's no need to really set up wide like Tiger did. You want to cover that inside on the way in. And we, one thing we've learned in the race we saw yesterday, Puerta likes to lead. He He's does. much of a follower, this guy. Tiger uh, tucks right in, and the two of them in the infield gapped Ferreira just a bit. I kind of like his idea of wanting to lead throughout. You know, you kind of stay out front. You limit your chances on getting tangled up with some of these other riders. It's a very aggressive young field here. And 
um, they'll really ride hard, so you don't want to get in a dog fight. Here comes the race winner from yesterday, looking down the inside, Stefano Mesa. He slots back into the third spot right there and thinks better of it. Everybody tiptoeing through the chicane. You can just see the tentativeness in the, the riders when they tip it to the right. So now we got three laps on the tires, the fourth, maybe next lap, we're gonna start seeing them pull the trigger a little bit. And Stefano ran a very savvy race yesterday. You know, didn't really, he played for the lead about midway through for a bit, dropped back a little bit, and then really ran strong right at the end. Tigert moving way down to the inside. He's got no help at this point. Puerta wants to get back in front, does exactly that. Look at Mesa, way down to the inside now, blows by everybody, slots into second. I like his line as you dip down in there low, and this is really busy stuff. Look at number five, Corey Alexander. He's, he's up in the mix today, so. I, coming off the, uh, the trial, I like to run low there because when you start your break and you're down on the flat part of the racetrack, you don't have to make that transition from off the bank down to that flat part. So Mace has got a good thing going right there. And Matt Sadowski from that off in the opening lap has fought his way up briefly to the four spot, now has slipped back into fifth as uh, he ran just a skosh wide and got picked off. And again now, a little bit wide into the West Horseshoe, and that opens the door up, and Corey Alexander up from eighth on the last lap moves up even further. Great run by Corey. And that goes, but yeah, he's got fastest lap of the race there, Greg, with a 53-2. That was the fastest lap we had, saw yesterday, I'm pretty sure. So the rest of the field's running about a second slower than, than yesterday. So, uh, you know, the track, they're trying to have to sneak up on it. They need to build some heat. Obviously, the track's slower this morning, but Corey Alexander found his way, probably cut that fast lap time by getting a two or three or four bike draft and making his way to where he's at now. Yeah, that's why they call it a toe. Exactly. <laughs> it, and it, and it, it holds works. you right along, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, it really works. And like I said, it's easily when you're running in five bikes to get sucked into that chicane early or turn one and end up having to run it wide. So Mesa leads out of the chicane with Gillum in second, Puerto to third. From what we saw yesterday at the end of the race on the last lap, it seemed like fourth or fifth spot in the pack seemed to be the spot you kind of wanted to be in. So a lot of these riders knew that. They, got, they went to school yesterday. The real thinkers out there are going to remember that and try to place themselves in that right spot come last lap. Well, I'll tell you, you have got to be on your game here because you're making a move, you're in a lane, and a guy starts to drift to go around somebody else at these speeds. You've got to adjust. Gillum doing a beautiful job of managing the draft, picks up the lead, and look at that. Corey Alexander from fifth up into second as they come slicing through into that quick right-left, right flick, and now down into the international horseshoe and nice move there again by Puerta just he runs a tight line to the inside yeah, he's it's, just not going to have it is he yeah. yesterday he fought back to Mesa or whoever it was every time they went into that corner and he's doing it again he wants to be setting the pace to the infield but right now it's the 69 of Hayden Gillum put together an effort after losing his ride last year it's great to see him back out here running strong we knew this kid was loaded with talent and you can see it right here Greg as they roll through the infield the Puerto, that road race factory group, have really got that bike working exceptionally well. But the Team 95 RM racing crew on their YZFR6, uh, Hayden Gillum, is making that thing work. He's getting the power down incredibly well. And uh, I mean, that's key because you out of six and then out of, out of the chicane, launch is that's key. Exactly. So, yeah, getting that bike up off the edge of the tire where you're able to open the throttle. Oh, and here's a big off middle of the track. That's coming out of that. That's coming out of the, inner, uh, the East Horseshoe, so uh, let's try to get that bike off track. Hopefully we can keep this race rolling. Yeah, Bryce Prince and has a pretty good off. We'll see if they're able to clear it up as this group. And there's that little bit of a wheelie, and that's, that's the expected spot where you'd wheelie, where you make that transition and hit that little rise in the pavement, yeah? And, the, and from the right to the left, the front suspension unloads, and you're applying full power at that same time, and that's what you see. Corey Alexander drops down to the inside and that uh, Celtic Suzuki and immediately gets swamped. Look at that. I think that's Stefano Mesa coming through down low. Gillum coming down, and we get a report. Bryce Prince on the 74 has that bike up and is underway. So hopefully that means we are staying green. David Sadowski making a nice move around the outside of Corey Alexander. Thought about taking Mesa at the same time, ran out of racetrack, had to drop back in line. But definitely working his way. Had a great run yesterday. And after that, you know, when you, you build a lot of confidence in a rider when he sees it, he can run up front, and now he belongs up front. He believes that, and that's what we're seeing here. 
to great effect. Absolutely. Puerta now. It's about as big a margin we've seen anybody have so far in this race over Gillum. And there's that nice tight line that you were talking about. Yeah, there's just no real reason to square that corner up, to set up wide. All you're doing in a race like this is opening the door for somebody to try to pass you in there. I used to run right down the white line and just follow the contour of the racetrack. Never did you set up wide for that corner. But a lot of these guys are going to school and they're learning. What can I do and what can I get away with? Mid-corner, do you tend to let it float just a little bit to get a little bit better angle you on that second it. part of the apex? Yep, you'll double apex it, almost triangulate the corner in a way, and it doesn't really look like that, but that's kind of the effect of what you want to do. Look at this battle for second, bar to bar. At tremendous speeds down here heading in, and Gillum thought about it, couldn't quite make it work, slots right back in behind Mesa. The 73 of Ferreira. He looked like, dropped back looked to like seven. Valentino Rossi coming in there, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, that he leg does. on the ground, like a dirt tracker. Yeah, he dropped back to uh, seventh and is now right back up into that fourth spot. A lot of company behind him again, dropping low. Puerta does as well, and everybody says, all right, well, he's leading. It's got to be fairly quick. We'll give it a go as well. Close quarters racing. Oh, Matt Sadowski again down. Uh, and that's in the chicane area as well. You see all those hay bales. He must have lost it going in. Not sure. If you can see the frustration as well. Got a wide look at it here. Keep an eye. Yep, he ran wide in the grass, and then uh, it's just. You know, I never liked the idea of those hay bales there. If you made a mistake, I don't really understand why they keep putting those out there. You got a guy that runs wide, now his race is over. He could have easily wove that bike down and rejoined the field at the back of the field or whatever and, and kept the thing rolling. But you get off track there, you're almost guaranteed you're going down. Yeah, exactly. Or at least put some gaps in it that yeah. you can steer to something. But, but on the upside, the family still well represented as David Sadowski is having a superb race and finds himself up in the second spot. And look at the leader, number five, Corey Alexander. Boy, what a great run he has put together. Yesterday, he was uh, his finishing, or he was back in 14th at the end of the race. So he's clearly determined not to let that happen. Another rider I want to give a shout out to is Miles Thornton is running in the eighth spot. He was the rider yesterday that had an issue on the starting line and didn't get to start the race and ended up rolling around after he got the bike rolling again. And he's only point one off the lead. So he's he's a player. And meanwhile, up front, Corey Alexander continues to lead Jason. Yeah, yesterday, Corey had a problem even before the race started on the line. They were trying to work on his bike and get it fixed. Then once they started, he got hit, and it knocked a piece of bodywork off. So what was happening is he was going down the front straightaway, both straightaways, holding the bodywork on the right side with his <laughs> leg, trying to push it in so he wasn't losing all that time. But you can imagine around here, he had a big sail. That's, that's why it was a little bit slower yesterday. So uh, he seemed to have things, got things working out a little better today. Boy, as if you needed something else to do to manage on the bike at speed. And in the top 10, he's kind of the only Suzuki guy surrounded by a whole bunch of Yamaha. So he's really extracting the most out of that number five on that Suzuki. Nice move around the outside into third by Ferreira. Just swept, swept around the outside of Alexander, tucked it back in Puerto Mesa Ferreira. Now your provisional podium with three laps to go. Yeah, but look at Corey. He fought right back and is now right back into that third spot. And this pack now, everybody knows they've been running a few laps. That's got to be getting relatively close to the end. What's the plan here in terms of where you want to place yourself for that last lap? Obviously, you want to be near the pointy end of the stick. You know, you don't <laughs> want to be in the back. So all these guys are trying to jockey around. And, and now the pace is going to start to step up a little bit. That time by Porta finally dipped into the 53s. He's really him and Corey Alexander, the only ones I can almost find on the board that even touched in the 53. We're a second slower than we ran yesterday, pretty much. So, you know, the track is not there for these riders, but now it's still the same race. So who's going to be able to negotiate this track? we got two to go when we come by this next time. So it's going to really start to heat up, and you're going to see guys really start to push hard. Alexander going with Mesa. They both got a great run at Puerta, but they both check up. Tuck right back in behind Tommy. 73 of Ferreira right there as well. And then David Sadowski, that's your top five. And I'm guessing that's probably the pointy end of the stick you're talking about. Be I'm in that top five and be close. Yeah, that, that, that top five right now, these top four guys are starting to make a little bit of a break right there. You can see that. And that's just down to 
really letting it start to hang out. They know time's running out. We want to all work toward the front. Some of these riders can't stay with them right now. We'll see how that plays out. But Sadowski's kind of in a good spot. You can see him testing the waters as he runs around the outside right now. If the race ended now, he would have been third right there, it looks like. So it's hard to put yourself in the right spot with this many guys. You saw Mesa make a big move down to the inside, but Puerta had that covered. And swoops out left, right, left. Two laps to go. Puerta's looking pretty strong. He's got Ferreira right there trying to stay with him. He's going to put his head down, but it just doesn't seem like anybody can make the break. And you see, after that long draft from the chicane down to turn one, it all regrouped this whole grip. We had the top five guys kind of breaking away, but now the pack is right back with them again. So it makes life tough. Definitely want to stay in the top three or four or five of this, this group. You know, a guy who's put another great ride up from the fourth row is Charles Weaver on the Yamaha number 13. He has joined the back end of that pack, as has the number 24. And of course, he started on the inside of that third row, Travis Wyman. This is a serious pack as there's that break now, a little bit of a break by that top group of five. That split, and then it gets back in real busy for the rest of them. And heading down into the. Uh, Chicane. Just got to show you how Hayden yeah. Gillum was leading it a yeah. lap or so ago, and he's back in ninth. Now, this is how you can get shuffled right to the back. In a pack like this, everybody's all over the place going around that slower rider down low. Some of them choosing to go high. Ferrer with a Rossi leg out. He leads it in the chicane this time. Puerta, Mesa, then Sadowski, and then Alexander. See what happens here. This is the first time in a while that Puerta hasn't led out of the chicane. So opportunity for him to look at that group third fourth fifth picking that toe up. You can see Corey Alexander trying to dip down to the inside trying that low line pulling that four bike draft. <laughs> Doesn't seem like he's got the speed look he has to tuck back in. And now Porter is going to take the spot as they come around by the start finish. This is it Greg. Here we go final lap Porta leads it but look at that group behind we had talked about that break it's gone Weaver Wyman all up into this huge queue now in this battle for the lead. Now could that possibly work in Tommy's favor if the guys behind him that, that's such a big pack they start mixing it up tearing each other's air off each other and suddenly he finds himself with some room. That's exactly what could happen and you just saw that three or four riders went wide into that first horseshoe. Porter got through there clean. This might be the break he needed right here. If he can get through this west horseshoe clean again and, and through turn six and up on the bank, and I don't think it's going to be enough. I just feel like the, the 10 bike trap is going to, the break train is going to be coming, will just be coming too fast and be able to reel him in. But he's definitely giving himself the best chance right now to get away and win this thing. Great job by the flaggers out there and that lap bike. He just stayed well out of everybody's way. And here we go. But Puerta, he worked that infield. In the interview early, he said, I ran nine and a half perfect laps. And he has ridden right now a superb final lap. God, look he's at got the a gap big he's lead. built. I don't know. They're going to run this guy down. No, that was superb in, in the infield. Now he just has to get it right in that chicane. And these guys see now they're all starting to battle it up. And if they go side by side into the chicane here, that might be exactly what it needed. Oh, oh he's got this. I think it's that it. may have been yesterday's winner, Mesa running wide. Tommy's made the break he needed to make. You could see Mesa. Is that Mesa rejoining right there? He's going to get sucked up by that pack. He didn't quite get the drop, but now he's got the draft at the 12. But it looks like he's done it. Man, he made the break, and it was a beauty. Everybody else just trying to settle the rest. It is now really a race for second and third, and it is a good one. To the line we go. Puerta has it and has it comfortably as they cross the stripe. Very close once again. And I couldn't tell whether it was Weaver or Alexander. But Puerta did what he needed to do today. He got that 10 lap. That was a great Superb ride. Race that in. was a great ride. I wasn't sure he's going to be able to do that, but he. Like you said, Greg, he got through there clean. Those other guys are starting to race each other, push each other wide in that horseshoe, and that's what gave him the opportunity to take that road race factor Yamaha to the top spot of victory lane today. Congratulations to him. Boy, to do it from the lead at Daytona and break them in the infield, that's got to be about as satisfying a win as you can get. It, yeah, it feels good, I got to tell you. But it's hard to do. You know, we saw it last year. I talked about it. A couple of riders, one from the front coming out of the chicane, but. Uh, and here's a look at what unfolded in the chicane on that last lap. There went Mesa running it wide. 
And there's that pack. And you Puerta could, just had him covered on the exit. You could see Sadowski and uh, and Alexander looked like they almost got together through the middle of the chicane and coming out they were side by side so they kind of killed each other's drive almost and that allows some of these other riders to come flying by. And enjoying this, this is just a great, great run by Tomas Tommy Puerta winning Super Sport Race 2 here at the opening round of the championships at Daytona International Speedway. He is enjoying this moment as he well should. He earned it, and that was, uh, again, you just can't say enough about that result. And it was Charlie Weaver, folks, coming from the fourth row, bringing it home in second. Again, this is unofficial. Then Stefano Mesa, uh, after missing that chicane, was able to get a great run and come back. Corey Alexander in fourth. And Tigert, after leading early an impressive ride for the journeyman racer, puts it in fifth. And Travis Wyman, David Sadowski, Sebastio Ferreira, Miles Thornton, gentlemen, you talked about doing a great job, and Mark Miller. Well, that's going to wrap it up for our Motorcycle Superstore Super Sport action here at Daytona International Speedway on Speed 2. But of course, more racing to come. We look forward to seeing you, and we'll have Superbike in the Daytona 200 on Speed. Thanks, everybody.